In this video tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to create Flappy Bird using Python code. And we'll be using the Pygame Zero module to help keep things fairly simple. Now just to show you what the final product looks like, I'll give it a quick play right now. And just to show you what we have to do, you are this little yellow bird flying through the sky. You use your left or your right mouse button to stay afloat. Each time you click it, he jumps up a little bit in the sky. And the objective is to get through those green pipes without touching them as many times as possible. The more times you get through the pipes, the more points you will get. As you can see, you're getting one point each time you go through the pipes. If you hit a pipe though, it is game over. Okay, and if you also hit the ground or the top of the screen, it will be game over as well. Okay, so that's our game. You've just got to stay alive as long as possible by flying through the sky and not hitting those green pipes, but still navigating your way through the middle of them. Okay, so it's a fairly simple game. I will be splitting this video series up into a number of different tutorials just to keep things manageable for you. And in the first video today, I will keep things pretty straightforward. All we're going to be doing is um, setting up our game screen and throwing a background into it. We'll also be looking at our file structure as well and how to get the assets required for this game. All right, so let's get started on this first part. Uh, first thing I want you to do is create a folder on your computer somewhere called Flappy Bird. Inside of that Flappy Bird folder, I want you to make two more folders, one called Images and one called Sounds. Now, if you're in my class, I'm going to give you access to all the images and sounds that you need. But if you are watching on YouTube, then check the links in the video description for all the different pictures that make up this game. In the Images folder, <clears throat> you'll see the different pictures we need to get going. Got the background, the bird, the two pipes, <clears throat> excuse me, and the game over sign. We've also got the ground here. Now most of these are pretty much downloaded straight off the internet. What I did do was resize this background to be 640 by 480 pixels in Photoshop. Okay, that's going to match the size of my game screen. And the other thing I did was the ground here. When I downloaded the ground picture, it was only a small little snippet. It wasn't this long strip of the ground. Okay, so what you need to do is make a strip in Photoshop or whatever editing program you use that's 640 by about 50 pixels height. And you just duplicate this little picture of the ground over and over again until it fills up the whole strip and save it into your images folder here. Other than that, the other pictures were pretty much um, downloaded straight off the internet. The sounds, we've got four of them. There they are there. They're just downloaded straight off the internet as well. So they are the four sounds we will use to make up our game. The final thing we need is this module here called the PGZ Helper module, or Pygame Zero Helper module. We've used it before. It comes from this website over here. Again, the link's in the video description, and all you need to do is click the Download It Here button. And once that file is downloaded into or onto your computer, move it over to your Flappy Bird folder. And that will just give um, Pygame Zero a little bit more functionality to help us do a few extra things with a bit of ease. Okay, so once you've got all the assets downloaded and saved in the appropriate folders, you've got this module downloaded, you are ready to go. So open up your Python editor and let's get started on the coding. Now I'm using Mu as my Python editor, so I'm just going to make a new file and make sure the mode that I'm in is Pygame Zero. Now the first thing we're going to do with our code is just import a couple of modules. So the first one I'm going to import is the random module. We're going to randomize some things later on in the game. And the other thing we need to do is just import the PGZ helper module that we just downloaded off the internet. So I want you to write from PGZ helper, import asterisk, which means we're importing everything or all the functions inside of that Pygame Zero helper module, this one here that we just downloaded. All right, so they're the two imports that we need to get our game working. Coming in below that, we are going to set up our game screen. So I'm going to put in a comment that says set up the game screen. And I'm going to set up the width and the height, first of all. Now, I mentioned it briefly before, but in case you've forgotten, the width is going to be 640 pixels and the height is going to be 480 pixels. So just get those two numbers written in. And I think once we've got this far, we're going to save our code into that Flappy Bird folder we made a little bit earlier. So there it is for me. Call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call the game Flappy Bird. You can call it Flappy or Bird, whatever you want to call it. Click on Save and just press Play at the top to see how it looks. What you should see is a screen that is roughly 640 pixels across by 480 pixels down. 
Okay, so so far so good. Now, actually, I'll just bring that back up. One thing I just learned how to change is this title at the top of the screen here. So at the top of your game screen, it should be saying something like Pi Game Zero Game. What you can do is add in a line of code here that says title equals and come up with a name that you want to appear in the title or that top strip of your game screen. So I want Flappy Bird to appear. Now when I run my code, you can see it says Flappy Bird at the top of my game. Okay, so that's a cool little trick that I've just learned, which I'll probably start using in all my tutorials from now on. Um, after we've got our dimension set up, the next thing I want to do is just simply put that background image into our game. So if I look in images here, this is the background image I want to stick into our game. To put that in, we need to make a function called draw. This is one of the built-in functions to Pi Game Zero. Okay, and it's going to draw something onto the screen for us. So to draw a background image on, I'm going to use a function we haven't used before called blit. It's a weird one, but screen.blit simply means we are going to draw an image on the screen at a set of given coordinates. Okay, so in brackets, all you need to do is put the name of the image in quotation marks. Okay, I've called it BG. Oops, I'll just go back to my folder so you can see that. There it is there, it's called BG. So that's the picture I want to be drawn on the screen. Then I put a comma and in brackets, I put the X and Y coordinates where I would like that image drawn. So I want to start at zero on the X axis, which is the left hand side of the page, and zero on the Y axis, which is the very top of the page. So we're starting in the very top left hand corner and drawing this image. And it's just gonna basically spread out across the rest of the page. Um, I'll put a comment in here just quickly, just saying blit means to draw an image on the page at the given coordinates. Okay, so just a little comment there to explain what's happening. Um, test that out. You should get the background image on your screen. So that's starting to look pretty good already. We've got the title at the top. Screen size is 640 by 480. So that fits our 640 by 480 background just perfectly. Now, one thing that you might think is a bit silly to do, because we've already got the ground on our background, this ground down here, so the yellow bit with a little green strip, what we're going to do is place another copy of that ground straight over the top of it. And you're probably wondering why we need to put this in over the top of it. And the reason is, basically comes later on, when we put our green pipes in, okay, uh, it looks a bit funny if you don't have something over the top of them. You just see the pipes coming across the screen over the top of this background. So what we're going to do is put the pipes in and then that little picture of the ground will just go over the top of that bottom pipe. I'll just help our game look a little bit better. Okay, you probably won't understand that right now until we get to doing the pipes a little bit later in the tutorial series. So just trust the process here. We're going to put a copy of that ground straight over the top of the ground that already exists on this background. I know that sounds confusing, but Bear with me while we get this done. So back up the top, first of all we need to bring in the actor of that ground image. So I might put a comment in, and just make a variable called ground, and I'll attach the ground picture to that variable. So that picture there is now attached to the ground variable. We'll set up the coordinates, so ground.x will equal and ground.y will equal. I'm gonna put the center of the x-axis, which is 320, and I'm going to put 465 for the y-axis. That's down near the bottom of the screen. Remember our screen is it's 480 pixels height. So this 465 is putting it down near the bottom. Now to make that ground strip appear on the page, we need to go down into the draw function at the bottom here and draw it onto the screen. So um, I might put in a comment. It says draw the actors into the game. And the first actor we're putting into the game is the ground. So ground.draw should draw it onto our screen. Let's give it a play. You'll barely notice the difference, but we have the new ground strip running along the bottom here, like so. Okay, and the green pipes will actually slip in behind this. So it's actually running behind um, this section of the ground, which helps keep our game look a little bit more realistic. Um, so that's looking good. Last thing I want to do in this video is just put the score at the top of the page. Okay, I know we can't get a score just yet, but I want to get the words in at least. So still in this draw section down the bottom, I'm going to add a comment 
it says draw in the score. And we're just going to position the score up in the very top left of the game. So let's write screen dot draw dot text. Okay, you should know that function by now. First of all, in quotation marks, I'm going to write score, put a colon and then a space, and put another colon. Now later on, we're going to add our score into here. But because we don't have a score just yet, I'm not going to put it in at the moment. We're just going to have the word score appear. The color I want that text to be is white. Um, I'm going to align it or position it using the mid top function. So mid top is going to be equal to 50 on the x axis, 10 on the y axis. So that puts it basically up in the top left hand corner, not quite in the top left corner, but just a little bit in and a little bit down from the top of the page. Um, after that, we're going to put an effect on this text. We're going to put a shadow in, so a drop shadow. So you write the word shadow equals, and we put 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. You can play around with those numbers and make them bigger and small to see what sort of effect it will have on your shadow. It's just basically offsetting um, the darker shadow from the white text. 0.5 pixels, I think it is. Um, after that, I'm going to write, oh, S color. I was almost going to write color, but S color means shadow color. So what color do you want the shadow to be? I'm going to write black. And finally, I'm just going to choose the font size, and that's going to be equal to 30. And I'll close my bracket off. Now, you might be used to um, where I've set up the colors before using hexadecimal code or using those RGB color codes, sorry, not hexadecimal, the RGB color codes. You know how we um, usually set white to 255, 255, 255. You don't always have to do that. Um, Python does recognize the names of colors, so white and black, it will easily pick up and it should set um, that text to the colors we've just named. So let's have a little look. There we go. So we've got score written up there in the top left hand corner. It's across 50 and down 10 pixels. As you can see down here with our alignment. It's got that little black shadow just beneath the letters there. I think that looks pretty good. So that's as far as we're going in this tutorial. I'll just zoom back so you can see all of that code. Not much to it, but we set up the game screen. We brought in our ground actor, drew the background, and on top of that we drew the ground. And then we put the score in at the very end. All right, so that's all I'm going to show you in this video. In the next one, we might get our little flappy bird into the game and get him flying up and down. So I will catch you in that next video.